Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad to be with you today. I want us to begin our morning today by looking at a verse in, in God's true word, the Bible. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. I'm going to um, hold it up so you can follow along with me as I uh, read it for you. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now, boys and girls, that's talking about what Jesus did for you and me when he died on the cross. He was willing to humble himself. That means it was the most humiliating way to die uh, was to be killed on a cross. And because he loved you and me so much, he was willing to die on the cross for you, for your sins and for mine. Uh, and I want us to think about those two words because we're going to hear about them in our story today. I want us to think about the word humble. And the dictionary says the humble, the word humble means to reduce pride. And proud means you're highly pleased with yourself. So if you're going to reduce that pride, you wouldn't be, you'd, you'd give the credit to someone else. And that's what good pride is. I, th I like to think of that there are two kinds of pride. The first one is one that's not good, like what the dictionary says, being proud of yourself. Oh, I'm proud of what I can do. And I did this, and I earned all these points in the game today. Well, boys and girls, that's another kind of pride. And this is the kind of pride that humbles itself and says that everything good that we are able to do is because God enables us to do it. He gives us those gifts. And in our story today, we're going to hear about the gift that he gave um, Daniel back two weeks ago when we had the story in Daniel chapter 1. We learned that God gave a blessing to Daniel to be a very wise person. And so we're going to learn how Daniel uses that that blessing and, and, the, and to interpret something for the king who is not a good kind of proud. He's the bad kind of proud. But before we have our lesson, let's sing a little bit. What we want to do when we ask God to help us use those gifts that he's given us is we ask him to guide us and to show us the best way to use the gifts that he has given us. So I wanted us to sing the little chorus, I am trusting you to guide me. Remember, we've learned this. Sing it with me. I am trusting you to guide me. You alone shall lead every day at our providing all I need. Good job. Well, I also want us to sing the hymn we learned, sang last week, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." We need to trust God to lead us and guide us, not trust our own abilities, because every good and perfect gift is from God, and everything we do well is because God has enabled us to do it. So let's, tr let's sing about trusting Him. "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, Oh, for grace to trust him more. Good singing this morning. Well, our lesson today from God's true word, the Bible, comes from Daniel chapter 5. Yes, we're still in that book of Daniel in the old part of the Bible. And so we're going to learn uh, what Daniel did with that wisdom that God had given him that we learned about in uh, Daniel chapter 1. But before we do, let's talk to God and ask him to show us what lesson he wants to teach us today about humility, about being humble, 
and about pride and what kind of pride we should have. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible. Help us to be good listeners to what you want to teach us today from your word, the Bible. Amen. Well, boys and girls, you remember in our first lesson about uh, Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar was king. And remember, um, Daniel, um, it, it, when Nebuchadnezzar was king, Daniel gave him um, some of the lessons that God wanted to teach him because uh, God used uh, Daniel and his friends. And then last week we had another story about um, the, some of the men from Judah that taught um, Nebuchadnezzar another gift, another lesson, and that was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you remember Nebuchadnezzar said, everyone will worship Daniel's God? Well, now a new king has come. And you remember before that, Nebuchadnezzar was worshiping false gods. And so in our lesson today, we're going to learn about that there's a new king, Belshazzar, and he's the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And I'm sorry to tell you that he is worshiping false god and gods and leading all the people to worship false gods. And so Belshazzar has has um, is putting on a big party, a big celebration, a big banquet with all kind of food and wine. And so he asked his um, servants to go and get containers for the food and something for them to drink out of. And so the finest that they have, everything that's made out of gold and silver. So they go and bring the containers that came, that the uh, Babylonians had stolen from the temple when they brought all the people from Babylon as servants. Remember uh, when Nebuchadnezzar was king, that they went and captured all the people in Judah and brought them back to Babylon to be um, slaves. And so this story takes place when they're still living there in Babylon. And so um, they are using these utensils. Now, the first bad thing they did was to take them out of God's temple to begin with. These were made to be used in God's house. And secondly, only the priest was ever to use these as he, uh, the people worshiped God and the priests led them in worship. And so now they were using these containers to serve at this banquet. And so all of a sudden, while they're making merry, laughing and carrying on and eating, something strange happens. A finger begins to write on the wall. It moves and writes four words. Two of them are the same thing. So really just three words. This finger moves. Well, the king and all the guests are very frightened. Well, who, what in the world is causing that finger to write all over the wall? The king is so frightened, his face becomes pale. His knees begin to shake. He's so scared. He doesn't know what it means. So he sends for all the wise men uh, in the kingdom to come and interpret this. Tell him what this means. When these wise men who studied and were supposed to be the wisest people in the country in the kingdom came, they did not know what it meant. Well, the queen remembered that she had heard about Daniel and how wise he was that God had given him wisdom. So she told the king, and the king sent for Daniel. And these were the words. I'm going to hold them up so you can see them. These were the words that were written. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Persen. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Persen. Well, Daniel told the king what the words meant. Now, Daniel was not proud in a proud way about wisdom. He said, I'm telling you a message from God. 
This is what God has said. God, the first word, Bene, means God had counted the days of the kingdom. The king wasn't going to be king anymore. The next word, to Kel, meant that God had given the king a report card. And boys and girls, more bad news. First of all, Mene, Mene meant that he would not be king anymore. And then to Kel meant was a bad report card. And we don't like to get failing grades. Well, God was saying that the uh, Belshazzar had failed in every way. So he got a bad report card. And the last word, Persin, meant that Babylon would be split up and taken over by two enemies. Well, boys and girls, the king, Belshazzar, had promised that whoever could, could interpret what these words meant, that they would receive many gifts and that they would be made very important in the kingdom. And so Belshazzar did make um, Daniel very important in the kingdom. And But, you know, the only reason Bel Daniel was able to interpret this was God had given him this wisdom. And Daniel gave God credit. He said this message is from God. Well, boys and girls, um, that night, God's message came true. King Belshazzar was killed. And a new king became king of this, this kingdom. And his name was Darius. God used Daniel's wisdom to get the king's attention about his pride. That king had thought, mm, I'm king. I'm more important than God. And so God got his attention through this message. The king thought he was better than God. Well, boys and girls, God humbled the king Jesus and, king, and humbled him so that Jesus humbled himself and died on the cross for you and me. Remember when I told you Philippians 2, 8 says, and being found in appearance as a man, how Jesus had lived in heaven with God the Father, but he came to earth as a man and humbled himself. That means had the most humiliating death of all and became obedient, obedient to God because for God so loved the world, he gave his son Jesus for you and me, humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross, Philippians 2, 8. King Jesus loved you and me so much that he was willing to humble himself and die the most humiliating death as in obedience to God because God loved you and me so much. He was offering his son as a sacrifice for your sins and mine. That's the only way we receive salvation, boys and girls, is through what Jesus did for us on the cross. So I wanted us to sing before we have our prayer time. I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only you. But this time, this is another verse. Trusting you for my salvation, free and true. Because that's the only way that we can come be forgiven of our sins is by accepting Jesus and asking him to come into our heart, accepting the free gift. And I ask you to think about that today. Have you done that? Have you accepted that gift from God? And if not, why not do it today? I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only you, trusting you for my salvation free and true. I hope that you've done that, boys and girls, and have asked Jesus, accepted that free gift, and asked Jesus to come into your heart. And then every day with Jesus will be sweeter than the day before, like we sang last Sunday. 
let's have our popcorn praise and praise God for what he did when he sent Jesus. Our hands we fold, our head we pray, bow as we pray to God just now. Dear God, I praise you as my Savior. You love me so much, Jesus, that you were willing to die for my sins. I praise you as my Redeemer. You bought me back from sin. You are my protector. You are my God. I can trust you. You're trustworthy. You are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And even as King of Kings, you are willing to humble yourself and die for my sins. So let's thank Jesus for what he did for us on the cross. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. From sin to set me free, someday he's coming back. What glory that will be, wonderful his love to me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. Well, boys and girls, my prayer today is that you have accepted that gift of Jesus and ask him to come into your heart. Have a wonderful week. I love you.